good evening everyone. I'm so glad that everyone had called in at to the end to our Rima Power Hour, which is the Bible Study Hour of the Rima Faith Ministries International. Uh, I am Dr. Brian Delta Credit, the pastor and founder. Um, <clears throat> we started the ministry back in 2002. Uh, we had went over into the Philippines for a couple years, years 2003, 4, 5, and 6. We went over there every September for a couple of weeks, and as we was led of God, we had started uh, ministries. We did miracle crusades as we was led of God, and people was healed, saved, and delivered. We also uh, taught in leadership seminars while we were there, and God blessed us, and we had planted uh, five churches while we was over there, and also uh, that we... Uh, be prayerful for our ministries over there. And here in St. Louis, we uh, hold worship services. Uh, we just moved to a new location at 1160, 1164 North Kings Highway, St. Louis, Missouri, 63147. And that's 1164 North Kings Highway, uh, St. Louis, Missouri, 63133, 63133. And uh, I'll be glad to see uh, each and every one of you all to come out and worship with us. And you know, and on tonight, uh, for the last couple of weeks, uh, we have started our Bible study back up. I took a little break, uh, and I, you know, before I took the break, I have asked uh, anyone: Is there anything that you would like for us to study, or uh, rather, topic, or rather, go through the book? And someone uh, texts me and asks if I would do a study in the book of Revelation. So for the last couple of weeks. Uh, um, we have been studying the book of Revelation, but what we have been doing is that we have been uh, setting the foundation for the book of Revelation. We have been uh, uh, looking at the history. We've been looking at um, a different application. Basically, we have been looking at the prologue, as it is called in, Re in, in Revelation. And we're going to ask everyone, if you will, turn to the... Um, book of Revelation, the book of Revelation, chapter 1 and verse 1. Lord of God, we thank you, we praise you, we give you the glory, we give you honor, we give you praise. Thank you, O oh God, for being so kind and so righteous. Father, we ask in Jesus' name that you will forgive us of our sins. Forgive us, Father, for anything we have done that was displeasing in your eyes. And Lord of God, we forever give you the praise, honor, and the glory. We thank you, O oh God, for a revelation on tonight. We thank you, O oh God, for uh, granting us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of thy word. For Lord of God, for some and for many, that this book of revelation that you have given us, it has been kind of difficult for many to understand, many to grasp a concept. And Lord of God, we just pray on tonight that you'll open up our hearts, open up our minds, that and, and pour into us the knowledge that you will have for us to, uh, on tonight. And not only knowledge, God, but grant us thy faith. Increase our faith. Help us to use the faith that we do have. For we do understand that studying this book of Revelation is about uh, faith. And we have to look at it in a spiritual uh, way. Not only just here in these United States, but also globally what's going on around the world. For Lord of God, we just thank you now. We give you glory, we give you praise in the mighty and the majestic name of Jesus. So we're going to ask everyone, turn to the book of Revelation, and we're going to read chapter 1, and we're going to look at the first three verses. Excuse me for one, one moment. <clears throat> we're going to look at uh, Revelation chapter 1, verses 1 through 3. Verses 1 through 3. And then uh, when we read those, we're going to do a recap on what we have already studied. Then we go further on uh, with our background studies on the book of Revelation. Revelation chapter 1 and verse 1. And it reads, The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him uh, to show unto his servants 
these are uh, things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John, who bear record of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ and of all things that he saw. Blessed is he that readeth, and he and they that heareth the words of this prophecy, and those things which are written therein for the time is at hand. So said the word of God in the book of Revelation, um, <clears throat> the first three verses, uh, chapter 1. So we had looked at uh, the book of Revelation. We had uh, dialogue uh, somewhat about the, the, some of the history uh, behind uh, the book of Revelation. We talked about the different views that can be taken uh, as relates to the uh, book of Revelation. And we, we concluded, uh, if you will, that um, out of the five views that are given, that no one can be dogmatic about any, any one of those views because all those views at some point or another will take place in the book of Revelation. Now, at the time that Revelation was written, we know that the, the Roman uh, uh, government or, had conquered or taken over uh, Jerusalem at that time. There was a great persecution of the churches that was going on at that particular time. And, and we, uh, we discovered that we have to we have to discover the um, the the history or the environment or the surrounding of a particular time uh, to get the old revelation to get an understanding of the new revelation. For we know that the book of Revelation uh, is singular. Singular, uh, the book of Revelation is is one book or one revelation with several visions recorded. So it's not revelations with an S, but revelation. And we know, uh, and we, as we have read, there is a revelation of God, the revelation of Jesus Christ gave, uh, which God gave unto him. So it came from God, revelation of Jesus Christ given to the servants, which not only dealing with the, the historical setting of the servants, or, or the church of that time, but also the servants or how it would apply to us now. So the book of Revelation, now as, as it relates to John's time, that the book of Revelation uh, is prophecy, uh, was strictly prophetic. But as we look at the book of Revelation, that not only is it prophetic, but it's also historical. Because some of the events that are recorded in Revelation has already come to pass, but yet then there are some things that still has to be fulfilled. So in our day and time, it is not only historical, but it's also prophetic, but and yet has to be fulfilled. And so that's what we have to grasp, that we have to what we have to look at, that we have to grasp the understanding about as we study, as we go through the book of Revelation. So we look at the, the book of Revelation as in the shadow, if you will, of the Roman Empire or the Roman government. So so we had looked at a couple a uh, couple of uh, scriptures. So we we are we look at the book of Revelation in the shadow or the history of Rome uh, as it is outlined, if you will, against the eschatological uh, antichrist, which is dif which is uh, which is difficult to distinguish between the two. So the we. Once we get into the revelation, we're going to understand that uh, the, the history um, of, of that time, or uh, as when the apostle John wrote it, but it's still prophetic. But yet, uh, so uh, the, the Roman Empire of the environment of that time shapes, uh, it has shaped, if you will, uh, the revelation that it will have a twofold meaning, one historical, one prophetic, and we have to understand that in the prophetic 
prophetic. Uh, if you would rather, if you read in the Old Testament or the uh, or the prophets or the New Testament, any other prophecies or their message messages were shaped uh, around or birthed from what <laughs> was going on at that particular time. So it was birthed out of the immediate environment, but yet it had gave some futuristic application that needed to be fulfilled. <clears throat> So, uh, so the history, the history, if you will, of, of Revelation or dealing with the Roman Empire and the stuff that was going on back then, which we'll look at, is history is eschatology interpreted. So to get the prophetic meaning, if you will, of Revelation or any prophetic message, we look at it historically, even as we are exploring it now. There are some things that uh, happen historically, but yet have the end times. And that's what eschatology, or these words I'm using, eschatological, that's what it means, that, that word means end times. So even at, at the hand of Rome, how it was uh, uh, realized, uh, the evil that the Roman Empire was doing at the time, uh, the evil that was being realized uh, at that time, but yet we have some realization as well in eschatology or the end times. So in general, in general, it is the case that the apocalyptic look uh, forward to the coming of the Messiah. Apocalyptic look, the revelation, the revealing of the coming of the Messiah. And we're going to discover that in the book of Revelation, there are going to be some things of the wrath of God that will be poured out on all nations that have not yet come to pass, that have not even yet been seen. So you could imagine the wrath of God that was passed upon the uh, Pharaoh and the Egyptian, the judgment of that time, is no comparison of what the end time wrath of God shall be. So then, we talked about the mercy of God. We talked about the grace of God. But there is also the wrath of God. Are oh, you hearing me? There is also the chastisement of God. So he will introduce... He will introduce what they call, if you will, a new thing to human history. As to John, this new thing has already appeared. The end times will be uh, a time of terror. Uh, we looked at last week at that men, uh, when I speak of men, I'm talking about humankind, all of mankind. So it's not just particularly talking about a gender when I speak of men, but it is understood when I speak of men or man is dealing with humankind. Are you hearing me? So men or humankind or, or the human species will cry bitterly the world will be shattered. A time of cosmic upheaval will occur when the universe known to men will be dis uh, disintegrated. Uh, stars will be distinguished. The sun will be darkened. It's just something that we have just seen here a couple days ago uh, um, uh, uh, August 21st. That the eclipse, that you couldn't imagine, now picture in your mind that upon the end time, that the, the, the sun being darkened in the essence, if you could imagine with the eclipse or how dark it has gotten in your region, here in the United States, you could imagine that the darkness of that particular time. Uh, how it shall be, it will be even darker than that. Is what they call midnight at midday. Um, so the sun shall be darkened and the moon shall be turned to blood. Um, let's look at um, Isaiah chapter uh, 13. Isaiah chapter 13 and verse 10. Isaiah chapter 13, and we are going to look at verse 10. 
And this also has some end times application or eternal application. So Isaiah chapter 13 and verse 10 says, For the stars of heaven and the consolation thereof uh, shall be uh, shall not give their light. The sun shall be darkened in his uh, going forth, and the moon shall not cause her light to shine. So there will be a darkness upon the land. And you could even imagine, you could even imagine, if you will, uh, like I said, with the eclipse, even between the, the sixth and the ninth hour when Jesus hung on the cross, when it said darkness had covered the land. So you can imagine, with, even with the recent eclipse that we had, the darkness that covered the land with when Jesus was on the cross, and even the application, if you will, how dark it will be or will become during the end times, and men will, or mankind, or people of the world will look for ways. They will cry bitterly, bitterly, because of these end times events that are coming upon us quickly. Let's look at Joel, Joel chapter 2, chapter 2 and verse 30, verse 30 and 31. And then too, as well, this is end times, this has an end times application. So not only, if you read verse 28, so not only did, did the Pentecost take place and God had poured his spirit out on the people, but also it's a continuous, it's a continuation. Look at verse 30. It said, And I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall turn into darkness and the moon into blood. People of the great and uh, bef uh, be before the great and terrible day of the Lord, uh, uh, the day of the Lord, the day of a uh, terrible day of the Lord come. So these are some of the events that can have signs in the heavens that shall take place. And people, that's why we have to be watchful, not only in the world of po uh, politics, not only um, in the, the, the church world, but also we have to be watchful in the things that happen in creation, in the universe, or oh, you hear me? Let's jump down to uh, uh, Joel chapter 3 and verse 15. And it says, The sun, the sun and the moon shall be darkened, and the stars shall withdraw their shining. The Lord also shall roar out of Zion and utter his voice from Jerusalem and the heavens and, and the earth shall shake. But the Lord will be the hope of his people and the strength of the children of Israel. So even during that time, the hope of the believers uh, in Jesus Christ and, and, and as we're going to explore, even yet, during the tribulation time, there will be some people who will accept Christ as their Savior. But yet, uh, uh, the hope even now, with all that's going on, even now, the hope that we have is that our hope is in the Lord. Uh, the Lord is our hope and the and our uh, anticipation of the return of the the um, and return. Of Christ riding upon the white horse. Or oh, you hear me? So people are going to wonder, people are going to cry. Uh, there's going to be a time to where um, uh, people are, are going to want to die and they cannot die. Hatred, hatred uh, will be upon the earth. 
uh, the end times human relationship will be destroyed. The, the, the hearts of the people shall wax cold. They, that, that is another prophetic fulfillment that is happening right here before our eyes as the heart of the people are growing wax cold to where there, there is no conscious of what's going on. There is no conscious of the, the um, consciousness of other existing human beings because the heart of man has wax cold. Are you hearing me? Every man will be against his neighbor. The end times will be a time of God's judgment. Who can endure the day of his coming? Let's look at, let's turn to Zechariah chapter 14 and verse 13. Zechariah chapter 14. And of uh, verse 13. And so glad to see all of you all, you know, viewing us on, on our live.me. God bless you. Everybody who's on, on Facebook, you know, uh, let us know where you are. Send us some 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 little emoji things or something. Let us know where you are. Let us know you're viewing, even those who are, are watching us, if you will, um, by uh, YouTube. God bless you all and those who are, are listening to us on uh, by way of conference call. So we got conference call, we got Facebook going on, we got live.me going on, we got YouTube. We're trying to reach everybody that we can. Hey, and download our ministry app, uh, Raymond Faith Ministries International. We got over 19,000 people around the world who has it downloaded. Uh, so Zachariah. Chapter 14 and verse 13, and it reads, And it shall come to pass in that day that a great torment of, from the Lord shall be among them, and they shall lay hold every one on the hand uh, everyone on the hand of his neighbor, and his neighbor shall rise up against the hand of his neighbor. There be gonna be every, everybody, everything gonna be in chaos neighbor against neighbor and this scripture too here has as well a uh eternal or or last day application so this is just some of the stuff that is going to be going on and that's going to be revealed to us in the book of revelation uh let's turn to malachi malachi chapter 3 malachi Chapter 3, and we're going to read, uh, start at verse 1. Malachi chapter 3 and verse 1. And it reads, it said, Behold, I will send my, I will send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me, and the Lord, whom ye seek, shall suddenly come to his temple, even the messenger of the covenant, whom ye, de whom ye delight in. Behold, he shall come, said the Lord of hosts. But who uh, may abide in the day of his coming? And who shall stand when he appeareth? For he is like a refining refiner fire, and like uh, full of cup, uh, full of soap. He shall sit as a refiner and purifier of silver, and he shall purify the sons of Levi and pure and purge them as gold and silver, that they may offer unto the Lord an offering of righteousness. Then shall the verse four. Then shall the offering of Judah and Jerusalem be pleasant. Pleasant unto the Lord as in the day of old and the former years. And this time about the purifying of the Israel and of the church as it was before. And, and we was talking about the purifying and when the process of purifying, as, you, as in the case here in Malachi, as a refiner of fire, 
And you know, fire is not painful. Pro purging is not is a painful process. Um, uh, the the uh, the fuller of uh, the fuller of soap, all of that is it, not a feel good process. But yet, God shall come for His church that will not have a spot or a wrinkle. So as we uh, continue on. As we to continue on, so that's how that is 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 deals with some of um, the, the the background, the how the uh, the Roman Empire uh, was persecuted, how they shaped um, the Book of Revelation uh, historically, but yet uh, eschatologically uh, in our lives and things that we need to look forward to. So now let's let's explore let's explore the author. Let's explore the author and get some clarity, if you will, of the author of the book of Revelation. So we know, as is indicated in the scripture, that the book of Revelation was written by the apostle John. The very John. John identified himself uh, as the writer of Revelation. <laughs> Let's go to Revelation <clears throat> Let's go to Revelation chapter 1 and verse 1. And then we are, we're going to look at verse 4 and verse 9. So it says here, The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him, uh, to show unto him, un unto his servants, things which must come shortly to pass. He sent it and signified it by his angel unto his servant, John. And that John is the apostle John that walked with Jesus. Let's walk, excuse me, let's jump down to uh, verse 4. Revelation 1 and 4, it says, John, right there, it says, John, to the seven churches which are in age of grace be unto you, and peace from him which is, which was, which is to come from uh, the seven spirits which are before his throne. Let's see another place where he identified himself. Let's jump down to verse 9. <clears throat> <clears throat> so we'll go to verse 9 and it reads and it says I John I John who also am, a, am your brother and companion in tribulation and in the kingdom and uh, patience of Jesus Christ was was in the isle that what that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. Let's jump down to verse uh, chapter twenty one. Chapter twenty one, John, uh, Revelation chapter twenty one and verse two. And again, uh, John identified himself as the author. Said, and I, John, Revelation 21 and verse 2 said, And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Let's look at another verse. Let's, we want to make sure. To, so when we go through these scriptures that we want, there should not be any doubt in your mind or in our mind that this was John the Apostle. 22, Revelation 22 and 8. <clears throat> and it says, And I, John, saw these things and heard them, and I and and when I heard 
and seen, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel, which showed me these things. And again, he addressed himself as John. So, this is, <clears throat> let's go back to chapter 1, just go back to our foundational scripture. So this is John. So this is the apostle. This is the apostle uh, is the one. This apostle is the one whom Jesus loved and entrusted the care of his uh, the care of his mother. The same John for whom he had loved. Um, let's go to the gospel. The gospel of John. The gospel of John, chapter twenty one. And verse 20. John chapter 21 and verse 20. Then Peter, turning about, seeing the disciple whom Jesus loved, following him. And that person is the Apostle John. Which also leaned on his breast at supper, which was the Apostle John, and said, Lord, uh, which is he that betrayeth thee? For whom Jesus loved, that was the Apostle John. So let's go, uh, let's look at another scripture. Uh, let's go to John chapter 19 and verse 25. John, the Gospel of John chapter 19 and verse 25. And this is when Jesus was on the cross and um, he was abandoned by all, but yet there was John for whom Jesus loved and his mother. John chapter 19, the Gospel of John, chapter 19, and verse 25. And it says, Now there stood by the cross of Jesus his mother and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Cleophas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciples standing by, whom he loved, he said unto to his mother, Behold, Woman, behold thy son. Then, then said he to the disciple, Behold thy mother. From whom, uh, and, from, and from that hour, that disciple took her unto his own home. That person whom Jesus loved was the, the apostle John. So let's go back to our foundation scripture, Revelation 1 and 1. Revelation chapter 1 and verse 1. So, this is the Apostle John. See, 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 not only was John the author of Revelation and the Gospel of John, but he also was the author of what they call the Johnines Epistles or 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John. He wrote those as well. The Johnine Epistles as they call them. Uh, he was the author of 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John. So we have here the, the, the Apostle John that wrote uh, the, the Gospel of John. He wrote uh, first and second and third John, and then uh, he wrote the book of Revelation. So, what was the circumstances then? Therefore, uh, you have John. Uh, of course, uh, John was a Christian who lived in Asia Minor, is in the uh, same sphere as the Christian of the seven churches. <clears throat> The church, a small group of Christians that held to their faith, were persecuted by the Romans. Uh, John wrote to a church uh, perplexed by many such problems when Revelation was written. So just as, now observe here, just as, remember we're talking about that history, history 
is eschatology interpreted or history is uh, the last days understood. So uh, as just as the Roman Empire of uh, that time uh, persecuted church, so shall it be again the government or the Roman Empire or the revised Roman Empire or the government or political arena worldwide shall, the church shall be persecuted. So just as uh, uh, it, it was written at that time, so it, uh, it shall develop and evolve in our time or the times to come. Revelation must be, revelation must not be uh, thought of as an intellectual puzzle. What is that saying? Spot the meaning of this symbol. The, what the beast mean? What the what the the woman uh, with the purple scarf mean? Or what does uh, the ten crowns mean? Or the seven crowns mean? With a guy with a crown in the middle. Don't seek out. Uh, or to pull out those particular symbols without reading, if you will, those in context with supporting scripture like Daniel and Ezekiel and Isaiah and such. Are you hearing me? And we're going to uh, be looking at those. That's why I hope you all just ride with us. Just ride with us because we're going to go at least uh, 18, to two, 18 months to two years as we go through this book. So just ride with us. I, you know, kind of like get a little energy. So then revelation. And so, however, today he he relaxed the church with freedom of religion. Uh, uh, freedom of religion has inclination for solving problems. So we want to solve. Sometimes we want to solve the issue, if you will, that had developed in Revelation. It's not the point of um, uh, having that embedded inclination to solve problems or to solve the issue in Revelation but to but to uh, to pray and that's where we may get understanding of uh, what the, the apostle has written or what God has given uh, in Revelation that we may be may apply in our lives and also to be watchmen to be watchmen to be watchful for the signs of the coming, the second coming of Christ, or and or the rapture that shall take place. Are you hearing me? So, but now, wow, you know, um, even today, even today, man, with so much stuff that is going on in our world, not just the United States, not just in any other country, but what's going on around the world, the, the church, if you will, the body of Christ uh, is sleeping, is asleep. There is so much going on, but I am, or we are going together to be, uh, uh, to bring about revelation to where when God reveals certain things to us that we could be watchful and say, oh God, the Lord is showing us that he is coming quickly. He is coming soon. We have to watch out for it. That's what we have to look for. So we, uh, the letter was written to a, uh, written to a little frustrated, persecuted church or churches. Uh, John writes to meet the needs of the church. And we're going to see, uh, the, we're going to look at the different uh, churches or the seven churches that was written. John, uh, who came uh, to Asia Minor, was uh, probably a Jew from Palestine his Greek was powerful, uh, vivid, and pictorial. That's why we got revelation in the, the, the development of that it is. is, is he, his Greek uh, as powerful, as vivid, as pictorial. We know that as even yet uh, as he wrote in the gospel and as he wrote in his epistles. But yet with the, uh, the, the style of writing in its apocalyptic form, form it is John is trying to convey to us what he's seen in heaven he's trying to uh, show to us pictorially as well as to de describe heavenly things with earthly words John wrote in Greek 
but uh, that was not his native language. Mistakes were made that even a schoolboy uh, would not have made. So, uh, uh, his writing uh, in Greek, uh, but thinking in Hebrew. I can understand that to a certain degree uh, from like some of the people on my job as, as it relates to, but uh, we got, you got, that's one thing about being bilingual or knowing certain languages. You could be thinking one language and writing it in another. John was on the Isle, John uh, was on the Isle of Patmos put into exile under the reign of the Roman Emperor uh, Domitian. I got to spell wrong. Dom Domitian. Um, so he was uh, put into exile and uh, tradition says that uh, John was so persecuted until he was dipped in boiling oil. He was dipped in boiling oil. But, the, but God had preserved the, the Apostle John's soul. So when they brought him up out of the oil, there was no scars on him whatsoever. So they, they seen this miracle uh, that was God did for the Apostle John. So they figured they couldn't kill him. So they put him on the Isle of Patmos. And, and the reign of uh, uh, Domitian was right around uh, 81 to 90, uh, 96 A.D. 81 to 96 A.D. <clears throat> but but the, the apostle, if you will, he was released under the reign of Emperor Nerva. So when Domitian uh, died, when his reign had ended, then you have Emperor uh, Nerva that come into play. He released John from the Isle of Patmos. That now let's look at let's look at Revelation. Let's go to Revelation chapter one. And let me find a verse. Let's go down to verse 9. Revelation chapter 1. And verse 9. And it reads, it said, uh, I, John, who... Also am your brother and companion in tribulation and in the kingdom and patient of Jesus Christ. Now, there's the key. The key is, he said, was. Was in the isle that is called Patmos. Was in the isle that was called. So, John has been released. As at the point of writing, if you will, this particular revelation. So he was on the Isle of Patmos. So under the reign of Nerva, that he was released. We see in verse 9. Was in the Isle that is called Patmos uh, for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. So after John was after John was released uh, from <clears throat> after John was released uh, from the Isle of Patmos, he had returned to Ephesus, where it is said that he is buried. Now John is the only the apostle, as tradition has dictates, as tr the tradition has dictates. That John was the only apostle that was not martyr. That was not martyr. He died of natural causes. He could not be killed. They dumped, 
dipped them in boiling oil. They put them on the out of Patmos. He, um, so then uh, when he was released, he was not martyred, but he died of natural causes as tradition has dictated. And for the most part, uh, uh, John's life uh, lifespan had covered uh, covers the first century A.D. So then, with the first century, he wasn't the first one. Uh, he was the first of uh, the apostle that did not die. Uh, was not a martyr, but he had the most awesome revelation uh, that has been given. So that's that's that pretty much. Um, uh, set the course, if you will, uh, for as as we get into uh, Revelation, we looked at the author, as a little bit of a person, uh, uh, the, the Apostle John, we uh, discovered, we looked at the, the history, if you will, that shaped uh, this revelation that was given to John, that yet had, it was historical, but yet in our time, it's two folds. It's historical as well as prophetic. Um, and that also, um, we did discover the, the uh, death revelation, uh, if you will, uh, is apocalyptic as well as prophetic. And we looked at the, the different styles. Uh, we know that apocalyptic, uh, both of these are inspired messages. Whereas apocalyptic means revealed, and then uh, those who are uh, uh, has apocalyptic um, a message, uh, it is written. The prophetic message is spoken. So uh, here in our Revelation, we understand that John, uh, with apocalyptic literature, it is written. It's a message from God, but it is written. Therefore, uh, the uh, uh, it, uh, it is determined that it's apocalyptic if given by revelation, but yet is it a book of prophecy because there it has been spoken. So apocalyptic is written, a written message, and prophetic is a spoken message. And then we also discover that the prophetic message uh, points to a positive end uh, based upon people re repenting and obeying God and the prophetic is believed that once people do that everything will be okay but apocalyptic writer if you will is more of a pessimist and they believe that no matter how how the people uh, repent or obey God that the outcome will be uh, um, the outcome will be bad or they look at it from the worst side of things but yet looking for the golden age and like after this world has been destroyed. So we look at apocalyptic. We uh, Let's recap, if you will, uh, the five different uh, views as it relates to uh, the rapture and uh, the rapture and the tribulation. We got a tribulational, uh, which is uh, well, a person believes that there is no such thing as tribulation. We have a post-tribulational, <coughs> where people believe that the, the rapture will happen after the tribulation or at the same time. Uh, 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 that the rapture will come after the tribulation. They have some that has mid-tribulational views to where people believe that Jesus will return uh, in the middle uh, the seven uh, years of uh, earth existence or the tribulation time. We have a partial uh, tribulational view. <clears throat> a person believe or spirit filled believer will be raptured uh, before the tribulation. We have the pre tribulational view uh, where that belief is that Jesus will come uh, before the tribulation begin and return after the tribulation has ended. And those are the five uh, views as it re relates to the tribulation and the rapture. And then we have three or four, if you will, millennial views or uh, what they call millennialism. We have uh, the premillennialism where the believer believes, where believers uh, beginning that uh, Christ 
uh, thousand year reign is taken literally uh, that Jesus will come uh, with his saints and set up his kingdom and reign as king for a thousand years. We have those uh, views as post millennial millennialism that Christ will return after the thousand years and stress the gospel of that present age or the age to come. And then we have the premillennialist view, uh, which is a parathesis or independent, uh, which means that in history that God will deal directly with the nation of Israel and Christ's return uh, to the earth before the tribulation and set up his kingdom. Uh, that's, that is the pre uh, millennialist view. And then, of course, we have the of millennialism, the a millennialism, which means that a person, uh, that their view is that you should not take the millennial kingdom literally that or symbolically, like it's not going to exist at all. But and we also discover within those views that none of those views should be just, um, a person should not be just stand on solid or dogmatic by any one of those views because all of them have been taken into account as we go into it and that we as we pray and ask God to reveal unto us uh, his coming or the signs of his coming rather is dealing with any of these views the main thing is that we are being watchful that we are conditioning our minds and our hearts we 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 now we know uh, and we are coming quickly upon the rapture. But is the church is the body of Christ taking on, if you will, the spirit of John the Baptist when Jesus first came on earth? He paved the way for the coming of the, the Messiah by way of or the Savior of the world or the, the Messiah. Uh, 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 he uh, preached uh, repentance for the kingdom of heaven is at hand and he talked about the Messiah that is to come. So are we the John the Baptist? Are we the, uh, the voices crying in the wilderness or in this world warning people of the coming of Christ's second coming? Or oh, you hear me? And building up the kingdom of God. So we talked about um, different uh, other positions um, as the the, the Bible uh, or as Revelation as a whole, as uh, being historical, as being um, as as some look at it as a preterist or a spiritual view. Some just take it as being. Uh, a symbolic or allegorical or some uh, just look at it as being historical and then you have your idealist so we look at it and and uh, we look at the uh, book of Revelation and I tell you what um, on next week I didn't know we we're coming up on this late so up on next week, we're going to actually get into the book. We're going to get into the book. And again, we're going to look at verse 1 through 3. Um, the revelation of Jesus Christ. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must come shortly to pass. And he sent it and signified it by his angel servant John. God bless you. Hey. Um, we're going to stop right here. Download our app, um, Rima Faith Ministry International. Rima Faith Ministry International. Download our app uh, to your phone. Uh, you can follow us uh, on your phone. Uh, uh, also, um, uh, like us on our Facebook. Uh, come out and worship with us at 1164 North Kings Highway, 63133. Uh, 1164 North Kings Highway, St. Louis, Missouri, 63133. And also, like us on Facebook. Boy, I'm glad so, glad so you all had, uh, really had tune in uh, with us on tonight. Um, and also, uh, look forward. Uh, let me put this out there. 
uh, I will be having uh, be releasing a book in a couple of months. I will let you know more about it. It is called Discovering God's Gifts to the Church. Discovering God's Gifts to the Church with the subtitle, The Holy Spirit and His Gifts. That's going to be released real soon. I'll give you more information on that. Um, and also subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, RFM International. You may look at all of our um, Bible studies as well as our sermon for Sundays. From Sundays, we got hun hundreds of uh, sermons and Bible studies out there for your viewing. Lord God, we thank you. We praise you. We give you the good order. We give you praise. Thank you, God, for all you have done. Thank you, God, for revelation on tonight. Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you glory now. Lord, we thank you for these who are listening to us by way of conference call. We thank you, God, for these who have viewed us on Facebook and YouTube and live.me. Lord God, we pray in the name of Jesus that you will uh, 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 provide their every need. Uh, uh, bless them, oh God, abundantly and exceedingly and abundantly above all they can uh, ask or even think. Lord of God, we give you glory now. We give you praises in the mighty name of Jesus. And all the people said, Amen. God bless you. God keep you. Don't forget, Revelation chapter 1. We're going to really get into it. God bless you.